Hello and welcome to Sydney Airport and later this morning I'm going to be flying to Port Macquarie with Virgin Australia in an ATR 72600 and unfortunately not in that 747. Um, this was actually going to be my first ever flight in an ATR although about two weeks ago I accidentally flew in one in Fiji. Um, so this is my second one. So anyway let's uh, head over to the terminal and I'll show you around. Actually, just quickly since I was already plane spotting, let's run through Virgin Australia's domestic fleet that flies into Sydney that all drove past me that morning. First up is the Airbus A330-200 and these fly on both domestic and international routes. A size down from that is the Boeing 737-800 which is the main domestic workhorse uh, that you see flying between major cities and they've got 78 of those. What's interesting is that they also have two very rare 737-700s which is just a smaller version of the previous one. And finally before we head off to check in, here's the smallest aircraft in the domestic fleet, our aircraft type today, an ATR-72-600 which you'll be seeing a lot more of very shortly. Now there are two domestic terminals at Sydney Airport. Terminal 3 is for Qantas and Terminal 2 is for everyone else including Virgin Australia. It can be sometimes horrifically busy, so a way of skipping the queues, and this is open to anyone, is to clear security on the ground level. So you find the arrivals area and then instead of heading upstairs to departures, keep walking towards the right and hidden off the side is this small security path. It's a bit of a walk, but well worth it. Now here we are airside, and those stairs on the left now are where you'd be coming from if you went through the main security path. There's a central eatery with the usual well-priced airport food and very impressive views of the airport apron including some virgin ATRs. I took off to the gates to capture my aircraft arriving and here it is. This particular ATR 72600 came off the assembly line in Toulouse back in 2013. But let's go through some history. Back in the 60s and 70s, everyone was getting excited about jet engines which were faster and quieter but they drank a lot more fuel. When the 1973 oil crisis hit, jets on regional routes became a lot less profitable as the number of passengers would fluctuate quite a lot so turboprop engines came back in. De Havilland Canada bought out their Dash 7 which was followed by the highly successful Dash 8 which you can see now in Qantas colours, also flying to Port Macquarie. Understandably, the Europeans wanted to make their own turboprop regional airliner, so the French and Italians agreed to work together, forming ATR, which translates into English as the Regional Transport Airplanes. The first model was actually the ATR-42 for 42 passengers, although after that created enough interest in the airlines, they stretched it to make the ATR-72, which is what I'm flying today. The seats all come in a 2-2 layout and my seat 5A is around the middle of the aircraft. I'll show you around it briefly, starting with the overhead air vents, which subscribers will know that I love as I always find aircraft cabins too warm. There's a fold-out table and outside there's a great view of the Pratt & Whitney turboprop engines. Legroom isn't great in the window seats as the cabin bends around quite a bit and this metal bar intrudes blocking you from putting your bag down there. As with most larger propeller driven aircraft these days, the rotation comes from a turbine engine rather than cylinders that you get in a car or older aircraft. The main advantage of turbines is that they're far simpler and have a lot less moving parts to break. You can also see the flaps extend and eventually the propeller is engaged and starts spinning. I was also glad to hear the doors close and still have an empty seat next to me, as it was pretty tight inside. We took off for the runway past the main plane spotting site, Shep's Mound, which you can see now where there's a bus and a few cars. That's actually the site where I recorded the intro to this video and footage of the different aircraft types. After waiting for a bit of traffic, it was eventually our turn to start this 48 minute journey to Port Macquarie.
Unfortunately, it was really hazy, although we still got a reasonable view of the domestic terminal in the foreground and the international terminal in the background. We worked our way up through the smoke to a cruising altitude of around 4,200 meters and a speed of 520 kilometers an hour. For comparison's sake, my next flight from Port Macquarie to Brisbane was in a jet-powered Fokker 70, and I've also made a video for that flight and there's a link to that below. And that cruised at over double the height and around 800 kilometers an hour, so that really highlights the difference between turboprops and jets on regional routes, but obviously the jets are a lot more expensive to run. A little snack and both a hot and cold drink were brought around and I settled down to read something. Just west of Forster, our descent began down through the smoke. Keen viewers will notice that the landing gear cover down below was on display, which is something I've never noticed when flying inside a plane before, and we cruised down into Port Macquarie Airport. So how was everything? Well, it was fine for a short flight. I was lucky enough to have an empty seat next to me, as things would have been pretty tight if that wasn't the case. The crew were perfectly friendly as I've come to expect with Virgin Australia and otherwise it was a perfectly comfortable regional turboprop flight. I suppose my biggest tip again would be to skip the sometimes horrific security cues by using the other one that I mentioned earlier in the video. Here we are pulling in and coming to a stop and then deplaning via the airport apron, which is something I always enjoy doing, assuming it's not raining. Here's one final look back at our aircraft and you'll notice that there's also a Qantas Link-8 here, and you can check out my video on board that on my channel. If you're into these types of videos, please check out my channel where there's hundreds of other videos from flying around Australia and the world, as well as follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching.